Hello everyone, good morning, this is Lindsay. Welcome back to my channel. By the time you're watching this, it probably won't be morning. It is around 8.30 in the morning. As I'm starting to film this video, we will see how long it takes me to get it filmed. My youngest is not feeling well and he's chilling out on the sofa. So in between checking on him, I'm working on filming this. So this is a uh, tutorial. It's one of those unplanned, not unplanned, I've been planning it for a while. But I don't know what it's going to be yet, what we're making yet. And I think that's going to be fun because you get to see a little bit of a creative process. So I am sharing, I'll pull my copy dye paper off, I am sharing a deluxe journal kit from the Scrapologist from Cindy. And I've shared from her before. And Cindy, I'm so sorry it has taken me three weeks to get to this. But with Christmas, I just got out of sync with getting everything done. And I apologize for taking so long, but I love what she has here and what this is a deluxe kit. You get a lot of beautiful things. Um, she put in this tool and I have never used anything like this. It says score it, ink it. I think it's for distressing, like inking and distressing. We might play with that, but I might just embarrass myself because I haven't ever used that before. So if you guys know what this is or what to do, please let me know. So what's really neat about her kit is that it's part digital and part um, is mailed to you. So I printed out the digital part and I printed some out on cardstock and some out on presentation paper. And they're just these vintage garden images. Oh, if I didn't mention, this is a garden kit. Uh, deluxe garden journal kit. So they're just some vintage images. I love the tones and how neutral they are. And we're really going to be playing with that. There's a few different um, pages that you could use as covers or as pages. I just printed everything out. I'm not sure what we are and aren't going to use. Um, I'm just, this is how I approach a kit. I don't know what it's going to look like when we're done, but I know we're going to have a ton of fun playing with it. And I think that is the best kind of craft session is to just see what happens. So um, what I was thrilled about was you actually get a paper pad and this is beautiful. It's called Mix and Match Pad the Watering Can. And this is from Canvas Core. And so there's a piece of canvas and then there's a whole bunch of papers. And there's all different types of textures and bits and pieces that really add a lot to a journal. So I'm excited about that. It's going to be hard for me to cut into this. I have a couple of different ones that are like these specialty paper pads and I just can't cut into them because I think they're so amazing, <laughs> but we're going to do that. And then there's like a vintage, um, like an actual newspaper piece and a really pretty like eco dyed or something like that, uh, nature type paper. And then there's a whole bunch of goodies to decorate the journal with in this bag. So we are going to get started. We're not going to use everything because there's a lot, but there's a lot to choose from. And we'll just see where my creative muse takes me. All right. So, wow, look at some of these beautiful things she added. Whew. Okay, this is going to be a really nice project. What do we have here? Nice. Oh, an old farmer's almanac from 1901. So your kit might vary a little bit, but this is the type of stuff. So we need to start with a cover. What are we going to do for a cover? I don't know is the answer. So I'm going to see which one of these papers is calling out to me and saying, make a cover. Um, I thought I saw, I'm thinking maybe this one. There's so many beautiful ones. Maybe this one. Okay, this would be a good cut apart sheet. So I think, I think I'm gonna go with, <laughs> can't decide. Oh, that one's pretty too. I think we'll go with this one. All right, if I can get it out of here. So this is like a heavy, almost like a meat lightweight chipboard. It's not, it's, it's a, cardstock but it's really heavy and so this is going to be our cover all right 
The only thing that I plan on adding to this project is some coffee dyed paper that I made, but we'll see as I get inspired if I pull anything else from my stash. So here is my paper trimmer. And I am going to do a nine by six. However, my nine by sixes, I take about a uh, eighth to a quarter of an inch off of each side, just so the cover doesn't overhang the pages too much. All right, that's about, yeah, that's about all I take off. So obviously we have to keep all these beautiful scraps because they're just too beautiful. And actually I'm thinking, you guys are going to have to let me know if you like this type of creative process video where I purposefully don't plan anything. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, because this is how I work and how I think. But if you like videos a little more planned out than this, then by all means, let me know that. Okay, so we have some ink pads that I'm going to use. I have mowed lawn and I, somewhere I have rusty hinge, but I will, <laughs> there's the bottom. So mowed lawn and rusty hinge. I'm going to use my beautiful little scissors from Joanne. She's junk journal treasures. So sweet. She's a treasure of a friend for sure. Okay. Alrighty. So I think what I'm going to do is use the green since we have garden and I'm just going to highlight because this is ripped. I'm going to leave it ripped for that texture and I'm just going to add some green to it. I love working with kits. Um, I love having only a certain amount of items to choose from. That way I don't get too overwhelmed. So if we're going to make a pocket here. Yeah, I'm going to have to cut that down just a little. No problem. Hopefully my glue wants to cooperate today. But if not, I will go get, I got a tape runner for Christmas that still has some adhesive on it. And that would be nice and easy for this project as well. Of course you could use your sewing machine. I do not have a sewing machine set up in this room and I am perfectly fine with not sewing this pocket on. All right, so I'm just gonna make sure that is glued down really well, not fold it in half. And then obviously I'm gonna have to trim just a little bit because we didn't trim this part yet. There we go. And then that side, oh, yep, we gotta trim it just a little. I hope I'm staying in frame for you guys. All right. All right. Let's pull that ink out again because we trimmed it and just give it that green. And then I'm going to take the rusty hinge. And I love, love the names of the Tim Holtz Distress inks. Like I have rusty hinge, mowed lawn. It worked perfect with the garden journal. And I'm just very, very messily roughing the edge with this ink. And yeah, I could use the green again if I wanted to, but you know, just going with what I feel like doing. So I already have the basic cover and in the pockets. I love how that looks. I love how it's coming out. I'm thinking of some kind of label or something on the inside here. So over here I have all the bits and pieces and I'm just seeing what she sent and if there's anything. Oh wow, this is a vintage tally card. I'm not gluing that down. I love the back of that. All right, so what all do we have? These butterflies are so gorgeous. It's going to be hard for me to actually use anything because they are way too beautiful. Uh, it looks like we've got, okay. There's a beautiful bead here too. I'm probably gonna have to pull some stuff from my stash, which is fine. All right, I'm thinking, hmm. oh, I think I want that to be a page. Oh, I have these. That's right. Can't forget the digital part of the kit. 
I'm just looking for something to just totally jump out at me and say, use me. Um, I'm going to put one of these in the back, I think. And I'm going to use a bigger pair of scissors to cut these out because this is good for tiny, fussy cutting. But when you are cutting out something big like this, it takes a while. So I have printed this just on some white 67 pound cardstock so that I did not have to glue it or sew it onto anything. It was already um, stiff. I can just add it. And if you watched my video yesterday about using up scraps, you might have a bunch of scraps that are set aside that you could pull out and use with a, a kit like this as well. All right, so we're gonna see here. I'm gonna put that right in there. All of the links for the Scrapologist are below if you go to um, down where it says other shops I recommend, you will see, um, oh, here we go, I want this, this cut apart sheet here. You will see her links, definitely. Favorite, follow, subscribe, purchase, all that wonderful, wonderful things. Okay. Love these. Now I'm just looking over them because I think I could put a little label here like grow strong or plant smiles, blossom and shine. Okay, I'm going to go with the grow strong and I'm going to cut it down a little bit. I just want the words. This is probably going to be a very long video, but I know that some of you said the longer the better, and I'm not going to speed it up. So, just enjoy. Okay, I'm going to put that right there. Have my glue. So now I have this little index card I can pull out from the back pocket. I might want to use those little bees for something. I like this bloom where you're planted card. I'm going to stick that in the front. These you could also grab some watercolors or colored pencils, color them in, but I want to stick with a very, very neutral looking journal with just the little pops of um, green and that's it. I'm going to round these corners because as you saw, I had ripped that corner when I pulled it out and I don't have a corner rounder here. So next best thing, just wing it. But leaving it very neutral is going to allow um, whoever purchases this journal to or uses this journal to really customize it and make it their own. All right, let's look at the cover and see what we might want to do. To do, to do. I am really bad at decoupage, but I love it. Just seeing what I might want to use. Okay, I love to layer, so I'm thinking about layering. Hmm. What do I want to layer? Okay, maybe. maybe I will. Oh, 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 yes, yes. Doilies. We got doilies. We got dropping things, as always. All right, so we're going to use part of, oh wow, that is stiff paper. Dropping my ink pads. How fun is that? <clears throat> I don't think this paper, oh, it does rip. There we go. I really think that ripped look is going to be really nice. Ouch. So hope I'm hoping that crafting will relax me a little bit here 
and doing this project with you will just help me start the day out well. My two-year-old is not feeling well. He was up throwing up last night, and the sweet little boy he is, he, he was going back to sleep and being a good boy and everything, but I know he's not feeling well, and I don't know, it's just kind of that anxious feeling that I have, because I've got a lot going on today, and I don't know, I just, just need some, some creative outlet. And that's what this is going to be for me today, is doing this with you guys. So thank you for hanging out with me as I do this. So I might not be super talkative the whole time. I'm, I'm tired and all of that, but I'm enjoying this for sure. So I'm just going for a really um, eclectic, layered cover. And I'm not sure how layered I want to go because there's so much I can use. Maybe a little bit of <clears throat> some of this as well. I love this green. It's it's almost the same color as that Mode Lawn Distress Ink. I When I started out crafting, I thought I needed all the colors of Distress Ink. And you know what? I kind of do. Not that you need them, but you know, there's that part of you that desperately wants it. So I bought them all in the minis. Well, they actually last a really long time for me. There's a lot of the colors I don't use and I don't have a great way to store them. So I'm trying to use them up and then just buy the colors that I know that I will use all the time in bigger pads, but I don't know. Like you guys let me know about your favorite inks because I'm thinking of trying some other brands and stuff. I usually just buy the cheap, like what's the stampabilities from Hobby Lobby or, you know, whatever I can get super cheap. But I also want to know your favorite ones and what you use them for because that would help me make some decisions I think there is no right or wrong way obviously with collage it's whatever makes you happy whatever you know you want to go with I like this so many seeds, so little yard. And I think I might cut that label out and use it on the front too. This is where I can use my little pretty scissors. Because it's going to get in all of those areas really well. Yeah, if you really want a journal kit <clears throat> from someone who thinks outside of the box, definitely follow Cindy and buy her kits when she comes out be, comes out with them because I have worked with a lot of journal kits and I think that different people, um, not ma major, but have different strengths when it comes to journal kits. Cindy, I really feel like she thinks outside of the box. She gives you a lot to work with, um, a lot of different things. You can get a ton of texture and a ton of just uniqueness. <clears throat> I'm sorry, my throat is not cooperating today. Goodness. Hopefully I'm not getting sick. It could just be early morning. All right, let me ink up this little guy too. There we go. All right, so let's start layering. I think I'm gonna do this whole journal without sewing. Um, I saw someone today or yesterday posted in one of the journal groups. I don't know if it was the Junk Journal Junkies chat group or the Friendly Junk Journal people. I don't know. It's one of the ones that I follow. 
and she, this lady said, I don't remember her name, but she said that she did not have a sewing machine and she could not afford a sewing machine. And she just felt like her journals were all going to be like, I don't remember her exact words, but pretty much subpar if she didn't sew on them. And she was just feeling bad about the whole thing and thinking that her journals would not be as good if she didn't have a sewing machine. And whenever anybody says that, I think of, I hope I'm saying the right person, but I'm thinking it's Yvonne uh, Preston from Junk Journal Junkies. She does occasionally do some sewing, but I've seen a lot of her journals where she doesn't do any sewing. And you don't really think, oh my, she didn't sew on her journals. No, they're so lovely. Sewing is just one tool. And you can use glue, just, you know, layer and think outside the box. So I don't want anybody to ever feel like their journals are not worth it if they don't sew. And I will, I have a shop, not a shop, a marketplace where I sell people's journals and I will definitely sell journals even if they are not sewn on. And so there's little things you can do like with this butterfly, my first thought was stitch down the middle. Well, I really didn't want to go all the way to the other room to stitch. So I inked down the middle and now I don't have that urge to sew it anymore. I feel like it has, you know, it's done. Now look at that fun collage on the front. So many things, there's vintage playing card, there's the eco dyed paper, there's vintage floral book page, there's the canvas, there's a label, there's so much going on. So I wanna stop there with the cover because I'm really happy with it. And now we're going to throw together some pages, which we will try to do fairly quickly. So this video isn't three hours long. Um, there's a few pages included in this kit. So we will definitely pull those out. Some of them I think are supposed to be like cover options, but I'm gonna use them as pages, why not? All right, I'll see how much of this video I can get done. My two-year-old came in the room here with me and he's just walking around. He's looking a little better but he's probably gonna need me in like two seconds. So we'll see how many times I have to pause this video. But to me, I'd rather pause it 10 times and get it done. The shaking's from him, he's grabbing the table. I would rather um, pause it 10 times and get it done than just not do it. Okay. I'm just trimming the white off. You could leave it or use your paper trimmer. Totally up to you. This I went ahead and printed on cardstock because the description said something about a journal cover. I decided not to use it as a cover, but um, yeah, the cardstock, it's still great to have all different types of papers. I know when I handle junk journals, I like all different types of papers in the journal and not just you know one kind. That's one thing I have really been loving about the marketplace journals you all are sending me is the fact that I get to handle a lot of different journals and I get to see what I go wow to and then I get to incorporate that into my journals. So you all make me a better artist. I have a huge, I think I have something like 15 journals to film and get up. I My plan is to do that today, but we will see how that goes. When you have a sick kid, they might be happy, you know, chilling out for a few minutes and then they need you and, you know, they need to come first, obviously. So it might be a little while. We shall see. I love ledger paper. Makes me so happy to have ledger paper in a journal. I actually have a really old ledger. I purchased it um, to actually use the pages in because I didn't think it was anything that special. It was from 1918-ish, I think. And as we looked at it, my brother and my husband and I started looking at the journal. We realized it was a World War I era journal 
and it had incredible newspaper clippings and everything else. So I am not touching that thing. It is going in my old book collection. All right, so I am going to use some coffee dyed paper in this because I want to I want to make it a really neutral journal and I want it's all shiny because I used some distress spray stain along with the coffee and it was like the bronze mica or something like that. So but I want a really neutral journal. I want this to be a you know kind of like a writing journal or a journal that is ready for um, memory keeping and collaging. I'm not going to over embellish it at all. And I'm not going to use everything in the kit. And I'm I might not even use all of these pages. I'm just folding them in half. So I think there's 10 sheets here. I don't know. Oh, I might use them all. So if that's 10 and that's four, that's 14. I also wanted to, to put in, oh, there's more, yay. Okay, so here's another page that I forgot. I'm not speeding this up just because some of you say you like to just put this on in the background while you craft or while you relax with your coffee. And I just want you to be able to do that and not have to pay attention to how fast I'm doing everything. Okay, so now we're up to 15, but I do think there was something else. Where is it? Uh -huh. I'm going to add this in as a little page right there. Now I can use some of this paper if I want to. Hmm, that green is awful bright. The yellow is too bright. I do think that this one would be really fun. It's that black and white. It really goes with what I'm doing. So I think I'm gonna cut this down for a page. Um, I think I'm gonna cut this one down for a page too. That might be enough pages. That's more than I even usually put into a journal this size, but I kind of wanted it chunky. All right. And I honestly think that there is enough embellishments here that you could do a series of journals if you added in some of your own like coffee dye paper and stuff like that, because there's so many like journal cards and tags and things like that. All right, so I'm gonna cut this down to eight and a half. Sorry, I'm shaking everything. Five, five and a half. All right. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. Okay, let's get the trimmer out of the way. One, two, there's all my pages. So what I like to do is look at my cover and then look at my pages and decide which one I want to be the first page. And I think it's gonna be one of these and I think it's gonna be this one. And we got a lot of copy dyed paper. So now I'm just gonna kinda go with it whatever I feel like. I don't think there's any right or wrong way. Oop. I love all the coffee dyed paper in this. I think it would be perfect for either a you know, springtime journal coming up or, you know, planning your garden or, you know, putting, just collaging. I've really been enjoying that in my personal journal. Oh, and I missed that one. There we go. So this is gonna be kind of chunky. 
Stick that right in there, like that. Okay, grab my paper clips. Hopefully I have some. I keep this bucket of supplies in this filming room and yeah, I never know what I actually have in it. I need to work on that. I don't think I'm checking if I have my needle in here, which I don't. So I have to go grab that. <clears throat> I am paper clipping in the pages because if I don't do that, my holes will very quickly not line up and I won't be able to quickly sew in the signature. All right, so I have an awl that I'm going to poke some holes in this with. Come on. It's a very, very thick signature. Because I have heavy cardstock, I have more pages than I normally do. And the cover's really thick, so. Wow, I almost poked my finger there. That would not have been fun. And I'm gonna do a five hole pamphlet stitch this time instead of a three hole. Same principle, just two extra holes. Come on. There we go. Wow, that was hard. Got my needle, I'm gonna grab some. I love using this type of crochet thread for binding. I find it to be quite sturdy, easy to work with, and I like to pick it up at like Goodwill. Usually I can get it for 50 cents or a dollar, and it lasts forever. So if you ever see those at your thrift store, um, pick them up for book binding. That's Probably my favorite. No, I know, I take that back. My favorite is this vintage twine that Steph sent me. Um, she's above Par Crafts on Etsy. Her links are below. But she had found a vintage twine, and that is the best ever. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Sure hope I'm not getting sick. So I'm just sewing in the signature. You can do a three hole. I just wanted a five hole. And now I'm gonna tie it off. And then I'm gonna add a couple of embellishments. Like I said, I want to keep this really um, plain for, for a couple reasons. One, I think that it, it, you know, is definitely people can do whatever they want with it. Two, I want to hoard a couple of these supplies <laughs> and not use them in my journal and use them for something else because I love them so much. And then also because I don't want this video to be 3,000 years long. So there we go. The journal is done, but now we're just going to add some goodies. It feels amazing. I'm, my hand, it feels really good. So right here on the front... All right, I am going to cut this doily in half. I'm go well, can't cut straight to save my life. The other day, I drank too much coffee in the morning. I think I had a second cup because I am definitely getting addicted to coffee. Um, I think it's all the junk journals and dealing with coffee dyed paper and everything, but that and not getting enough sleep, <laughs> both of those. But um, anyway, so I had an extra cup of coffee in the morning and I was trying to work on a project and my hands were like jittery from the coffee and I was like, this is not helping. For to find that balance. I think I only had a half a cup of coffee this morning, but that's just because my favorite creamer is empty and I had to use almond milk, just plain almond milk, and that was not anywhere near as fun. So, okay, I'm actually gonna use a little bit of this yellow twine that I have here. This did not come in the kit. I'm just, like I said, using it to bind, but I'm going to put it through the hole in this tag. We are already at 
35 minutes long, so I want to wrap this up in the next 5 to 10 minutes, if possible. But who knows, I might just get so into decorating this journal that it's an hour long. At least there is a pause button or a turn off stop talking Lindsay button. So if it gets too long for you, then you can do that. All right, what do I wanna do here? I don't think I'm gonna decoupage in this because I'm just gonna mess up and embarrass myself. <laughs> I will, I will. I think this is really pretty. I'm going to rip it just to give it so the edges aren't so harsh. I'm going to go get a glue stick so I don't have to deal with this glue bottle anymore. Okay, I'm back. I guess you guys don't know I was just gone for five minutes, but <laughs> that is the beauty of the pause button. My little one needed to get dressed. He's feeling better, and hopefully he stays feeling that way. All right, so I'm gluing this, over gluing it, because I don't have a brain today. So we're just adding little pops of stuff. All right, I'm wondering, hmm. I love this red trim, but I'm gonna save it for another project because I'm not really using red in this. So I'm trying to think. I think that's pretty. Kind of use the doily as a tab. Oh, if I can. Just add some glue to the corner. You could stitch it on. Of course, I'm making a mess. In my normal workplace, I now have a Tim Holtz glass media mat that I love. I mean, it is like 10 times better than I thought it would be. I love it. It's to me, it's pretty much a need. Okay, so we have some very blank, very boring pages here. We are going to remedy that. Hmm. I'm going to see if I can turn this into a tuck spot. to that green canvas we were playing with. There we go. empty glue bottles doesn't do much for you I'm gonna see if this will work there we go all righty and then you can tuck something behind that actually I'm not liking that I want to Glue the whole thing down. I think it just looks really tacky. There we go. That's good. I like that. Just adding some color, some texture, wherever it might be needed. Okay. You're here in my, my little one. All right, so I really think you guys are getting the idea here. Do I have a, probably not going to do much more on 
probably can't hear me. I'm over here grabbing clips. I'm probably not going to do much more on this video since you have the idea of what I am going for and just adding little bits and little pieces leaving lots of writing space. And I actually think, hmm, I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with this journal, but I definitely have an idea. Okay, so I'm digging. This is, this I'm gonna add to my own journal just because I love it way too much. Oh, we definitely have to use some of this old almanac Look at how incredible that is. Wow. And if I glue that there just a little bit, then it can flip open or just tack it down. Just a little bit. I have to go grab another bottle of glue here if it's not gonna cooperate. That way you can still look at how pretty it is. Very nice. All right, well, thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you, Cindy, for sponsoring this video and for putting together this lovely kit for us to work with. I can't thank you enough. It is just lovely. And I'm not gonna put this journal in my shop because I have another idea for it. I think I'm gonna send it to my pen pal. I think she will like it. So, there we go. Just clipping some stuff in. All right, so I'm just flipping through here, and you can see I'm probably going to do a little bit of stamping um, with some garden stamps I have. And there's the end. But it looks amazing. It is so beautiful. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you purchase her kit and you follow her so that you see the next kits because every kit is so amazing and unique. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.